Hey guys, it's Ethan, also known as Craigston. Welcome back to another video. So this video will be the ultimate guide to starting a successful clothing brand. This video is going to be split into chapters, each going in order. So for a quick overview, I'm going to first start talking about the things to know before starting your clothing brand and what you will need to start. Then we will talk about developing a business plan, finding a target audience, developing brand identity and brand aesthetic. After that, I'll explain how to create a name, a logo and designs for your clothing brand. I'll continue with how to actually get the product, market the product, and then sell it. Then finally, I'll give you guys some extra tips and tricks that help me grow and scale my clothing brand. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay, so things to know before starting your clothing brand. Number one, understand that starting a clothing brand is not easy and will take a lot of effort. If you really want to be successful, you're going to have to put most of your time into it. Also, you will face a lot of hard challenges and you may completely fail. With starting any business, you have to be okay with failing again and again, and you have to continue to get back up. Clothing also has a ton of competitors, especially now since the rise of the fashion community. So um, yeah, just make sure you're putting your time and effort completely into your clothing brand. Now that we got that out of the way, here's what you will need to start. One, one, you will of course need money. A lot of people will tell you that you can start a clothing brand with $100 or with no money. I disagree with this. I believe if you are serious, you should at least start with close to $400 or $500 and if possible, get a job. This is to make sure that even if something goes wrong with your clothing brand, you wouldn't be stuck um, due to money. You will also need time. If you have school and then basketball practice and then you're going to the gym, where are you going to find the time to actually work on your business? The third thing is to have an open mind, be determined and motivated to learn. So as long as you got these things set up and straight, then you will be good to start. Okay, so now let's talk about developing a business plan. So developing a business plan consists of a couple things. First, we'll create a business summary and business description. Then we'll do market research and find your target audience. And then create a marketing plan and sales strategy. And then estimate your business's costs, recurring and overhead expenses. Okay, so now let's talk about brand identity. So brand identity can be a little complicated and that's why I'm not going to fully go into it in this video. But as for the other topics, you should see a card pop up on the top right. It will be a video of fully explaining brand identity and I recommend you watch it after this video. Brand identity is the way you want others to perceive your brand. Do they want to see your brand as a Y2K style brand or a designer brand? Do they want to see it as a happy or a sad brand, etc. Brand identity is basically a personality for your brand. The way I found my brand identity was really putting my personality onto my clothing and finding a way to express myself through my designs. So first let's talk about your brand's design elements. So do you want a lot of dark colors or light colors for your brand? What exactly is the style of your designs? Once we figure that out, what exactly do you want your brand's voice to be? Do you want to be more professional or more personal? Being professional would be using political correctness and more serious wording, and being personal would be using more of your individual slang, vocabulary, and wording. Next, ask yourself what is your brand's mission? What are you trying to achieve with your brand, and how are you trying to influence people with your brand? Finally, figure out what you want people's perception of your brand to be. So in a perfect world, what do you want the average person to look at your brand as? So that's brand identity, and yeah. So once we found our brand identity, it will help us create a vision for the way we want our clothes to look like. Now we can work on developing a name for the brand, a logo, and an overall brand aesthetic. So how do you find a name that looks nice, sounds nice, and represents your brand? First thing is make sure your brand name is short, concise, and memorable. Make sure your name is something people can remember and pronounce without a second thought. So make a list of words that represent your brand's identity, and then you want to put some words together. So let's say I want to make a brand that represents being happy. A couple words that I would write down are happy, joy, ecstatic, love, and feeling. I would also consider using generic words and words from foreign languages. So let's say with what we learned so far, I would create a brand named ecstatic joy. Kind of corny, but it's just a simple example. Um, so yeah, I hope we have a name for your brand now. And now we need to make a logo. The logo is one of the most important things for your brand. It's the first thing besides the name that a person looks at. But like usual, I have an in-depth video for that too. It will be at the top right in a card or in the description below. So we have our name and logo. We can start working on designing now. So designing is extremely complicated and requires multiple videos to learn. But I will show you guys the overall basics of designing a clothing piece. 
and it will be pretty easy. So first you want to figure out the overall mood for your design. I would recommend finding inspiration for your clothing and creating what's called a mood board. So a mood board is just a collection of images that you will help use to create a vision for your design. So the images don't need to only be clothing. For example, I like to use a lot of interior design and nature. I also recommend Pinterest and Instagram to look for inspiration. Next, using the mood board, create what's called a color palette. A color palette is just a simple overview of colors that you will be using for your design. The best designs don't feature too many colors. I use around two to three and for more complex designs, maybe four to five. For color palettes, visit this website. It's called colors.co. It's a free website and it's great. So let's talk about fabric. There are two main fabrics you will see most brands using and that will be cotton and terry fabric fleece. Make sure to do more research on fabrics and I would also recommend visiting a fabric store to see which textures you like. So for fabric, there would also be a term called GSM. It stands for grams per square meter. The higher the GSM, the more heavy and expensive the fabric will be. For a clothing piece, it is very important to tailor the fabric to the season you are releasing your clothes in. So you don't want to be selling a heavyweight hoodie in the summer, nor do you want to be selling a lightweight mesh short in the winter. So let's also talk history. So as I said in previous videos, people don't like to buy meaningless clothing. Make sure your design and clothing has a meaning behind it and make sure the meaning isn't too hard to understand or see. So with this information, you should be able to create a design. I also made a video on how to exactly make a design. So that would be obviously in the top right or in the description below. So we made a business plan. We have a vision for our brand. We created a name and logo and we have a couple designs ready. Now, how do we actually bring our clothes to life? So there are a couple ways and I'll be explaining the pros and cons of each. So number one, doing it yourself. So doing it yourself is a good way to start, but scaling your business when you are getting tons of orders will be hard. Let's start with the pros. You control the quality of your clothes completely. You also control the speed of which you ship out your clothes. And you can also say that your clothes are handmade and made in house. You also don't have to worry about getting scammed by manufacturers. So the cons are that the startup costs will be more expensive. You also have to learn how to make clothes, which you will mess up a lot in the beginning. You will also have to consistently restock supplies and it is also very hard to scale and will take up a lot of your time. So the second way is manufacturing. So manufacturing is when you send your designs to a company that specializes in clothing creation. The pros of manufacturing is that you can scale the business much easier. You also have much more time to work on the logistics of your brand and you're not going to be spending it mostly on just making your clothes. And you also don't have to necessarily learn how to make the clothes yourself and you don't have to hire employees. So the cons of manufacturing is that a lot of manufacturers lie and scam. A lot take a very long time to ship out, especially overseas manufacturers, and the price will be higher and sampling will be very expensive. So I hope this information helped you make a decision on which route you want to take. So let's say you want to do it yourself. There are a couple of things you will need to buy. If you are doing cut and sewn clothing, you will need to buy fabric and a sewing machine. If you are doing cut and sewn, you can order blanks via many different blank companies. My favorite being LA Apparel. If you are doing screen print, you will also need to buy a screen printing setup, which can run you upwards of two grand. You also need a pretty large amount of space. I personally don't make the clothes myself, so I can't give much information about how to screen print. However, there are many YouTube tutorials and tips that you can find. So if you're going to go the, the manufacturing route, there are two ways you can go, either domestic or overseas manufacturing. Domestic is manufacturing that is either local within your city or within your country. Local manufacturing is usually more expensive, however shipping cost is cheaper and shipping time and risk is less. If you choose to go find overseas manufacturing such as Vietnam, China and Pakistan, usually there is a higher risk of getting scammed. There is also a more expensive shipping fee and a longer shipping time. Also depending on the manufacturer, there is usually a language barrier. To find manufacturer, I recommend Alibaba and Instagram. To find the right manufacturers, I'd recommend looking through TikTok and searching up good manufacturers for let's say hoodies. If you want a list of these manufacturers that I've used in the past and more clothing brand resources, check the description and message me on Instagram. I do charge, however, it's fairly cheap for the value that you would receive. So you found your manufacturer. Now let's send your manufacturer your designs and specify exactly what fabrics and printing types you want to use. They will give you a sample price, which always depends on the design. However, look between $60 to $150, including shipping fee. Always negotiate with your manufacturer and never take the first price they give you. It is expensive for only one clothing piece. However, that is just the price you have to pay for sampling clothing. Once you order the samples, start making your social media accounts such as Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Meta, etc. Make a good profile look and do not start posting yet. 
While waiting for your samples, start working on a marketing plan. How exactly do you want to reach your target audience and sell the clothing? Write this plan in detail and make sure that you stick to the plan. So once you receive your samples, start wearing your clothes everywhere. Take pictures of it everywhere and make sure these pictures match your brand's aesthetic. Create an Instagram post that has a nice solid color background and post it with a drop date at least one to two weeks from then. A lot of brands like to use marble flooring. I think it's a very nice idea and I would recommend using it. Um, so once you post that on Instagram, start making content like your life depends on it. If you aren't posting three to four high quality, good edited TikToks a day and reposting these TikToks on Instagram reels, posting on your Instagram story consistently and growing your community, don't even drop the clothes. If you aren't going to put effort into creating a good atmosphere for your brand, why would anyone buy your stuff? While you're doing this, start working on a website for your clothing brand. You can use Shopify or Big Cartel or Webflow. I do have a full tutorial on this and I won't be explaining how to in this video. Also, if you would like to have a website created for you, check the description of this video. Make sure your website is password protective and get people to sign up for your email list in order to get notified for the actual release. I also have an in-depth video on email marketing I recommend you check out because email marketing will get you most of your sales and will help you a lot in the long run. Basically, there are three main um, website creations that I like to use. There's Shopify, there's Big Cartel, and Webflow. I like to use Shopify personally because Shopify has a lot of customization um, and there's a lot of apps already handmade for Shopify. Um, Big Cartel is better for starting off because it's free um, and Webflow is very customizable and it's a little more expensive and yeah. So now you're ready for your first drop. Make sure to have a good drop date and a good drop time. Don't make it at a 3pm on a Tuesday where everyone is at work and could care less about the drop. Make it at a good time and date. I recommend using Sunday at around 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It helps a lot. So the night before and minutes before the drop, make sure your website is working perfectly and consistently update your customers on when the website will be opening and notify all of your customers. I also recommend sending early access emails to your email list 10 minutes before the drop. Okay, so let's say you dropped your clothes and you got some sales. Good job. Convince your customers to repost their orders on Instagram and tag you. This will increase your brand's attention and influence. Okay, so now you actually have to order the clothes. So with the money from the pre-orders, buy a bulk order from your manufacturer or start making the clothes yourself. Reminder, always negotiate with your manufacturer and consistently update your customers on shipping times and manufacturing times. Once you receive the clothes, ship out to the customers as soon as possible and make sure the packaging is nice. I also really recommend writing personal thank you notes Believe it or not, it makes customers feel special and leaves a soft spot in their heart for your brand. Now just rinse and repeat.